fun, y'all. Welcome to the party. Thanks for coming through. My name is Davion Gooden. I'm the creative director over at Studios of Year. And today, we're going to talk about how my newbie solo self somehow landed on Xbox Game Pass. Still not really sure how that happened, but I have a few very educated guesses. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But uh, first off, as a little brief disclaimer, I'm just speaking from my own personal experiences. Yours might be very different. And I'm still figuring out this whole thing because video games are weird. Um, I'll also be talking a lot about Xbox Game Pass, but all the advice I'm giving still applies to like any type of platform holder talks or just any company negotiation or relationship in general. Uh, so with that out of the way, a little context about myself. Uh, I'm a 22-year-old Cleveland-based developer. Uh, I've been making games for about 10 years now, but She Dreams Elsewhere is my first commercial big boy title, so to speak. Uh, I've also worked in film, directing, screenwriting, photography, and just all types of weird, creative, DIY stuff in general. Uh, as for Street Dreams Elsewhere itself, it's a surreal adventure RPG. You're playing as a woman named Thalia, and you're in a coma. And you gotta figure out how you got in a coma, find a way to wake up, confront your own inner nightmares, and have a horrible trip you experience throughout the entire way. Um, so I'm a little bit biased. I think it looks pretty cool, sounds pretty cool, but it definitely didn't start out like that at first. Um, so flashback to four and a half years ago, when I first started development. Uh, I was a wee young lad in my senior year of high school, uh, and I was like, hey, I want to make this big game, and I think I can finish it in five months, while also being a senior and making a feature film for my senior project, so needless to say, that didn't work out, but hey, you know, we'll get there. But still, I knew that if I wanted some metric of success, I had to get the word out there somehow while having no money or resources of my own, as one does while being a broke high schooler. Um, so as you can see, when the game first started out, out in development, uh, it was a lot more colorful and cartoony, but also a bit like rough, unpolished, and a little bit generic, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, but still, I was like, gotta get the word out there somehow, and I gotta get on Steam. So I posted the game on Steam Greenlight, when it was so active back in the day, and the results were uh, not too hot. Um, there were some good comments here and there, but a lot of it was pretty negative. Uh, a lot of it justifiably so. Um, and it was a real shocker to me because I had never, I had never like posted any of my games on a, such a big mainstream site, such a wide audience. Um, so yeah, it, it was rough at first, but still in my eyes, feedback is still feedback. So I took it. Um, and what I really ended up realizing is that the game really didn't have its own unique personality yet. Uh, and the audience reacted to that. And it made me realize that I really had to do a lot better with the game itself, but I also had to do a lot better when it came to games marketing and doing a better job of communicating the game, my vision to potential players. Um, so I kept at the game, kept developing it throughout the next few years, um, get the cool black and white aesthetic purely by accident one day. Uh, so that was fun. So yeah, as the game uh, development progressed uh, and I grew as a person, the game grew too, and eventually it found its own unique voice and became something that was actually worth paying attention to. So if I had, if I had any one big piece of advice throughout this entire talk, is that if you want to get attention, you, the game itself has to deserve it first. Um, I think the big thing why She Dreams Elsewhere had that really negative reaction at first was because it really came across as like a low effort like RPG maker game. Um, so yeah, it took me a while to find that unique voice. But eventually I got there, so definitely be patient, but it is key to actually find that unique voice first. Because nothing is worse than spending all these years on your precious little child, only for them to get bullied and ignored at their, on their first day of school. So yeah, that's a, that was fun. Also, stay hydrated, y'all. It's a rough year out here. We gotta stay safe, stay healthy, all that fun stuff. So yeah. I had to get the word out there somehow still, even with finding my own unique voice. Um, and I still had no money, no resources, and also no clue what I was doing. Uh, but still, I had to do something about it. Uh, so I went to social media. Uh, and that's kind of ironic because I hate social media, still do to this day. But hey, what can you do? So I mainly post on social media sites like Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, and I utilize hashtags a lot. Uh, stuff like screen, hashtag screenshot Saturday, indie dev, game dev, 
anything that could really just take the game out to, into a wider audience. So I wasn't just, you know, yelling to the two people who followed me at the time. Um, and I never, I kept it pretty low, low key. Like I, there was no like big press beats or big review or like any, any type of like hype building. It was just more of me just like, like slowly posting bits and pieces of progress and slowly gaining traction as the month progressed. I also lean on my RPG Maker community a lot too, uh, because the game is also built in RPG Maker. Um, and they were great both for just support and advice and tips, but also for just having that small initial group of like first adopters who really champion the game in the years to come. So yeah, after I find my, again, unique voice, so to speak, uh, I officially announced it in summer 2018 with the nice little teaser trailer and the uh, launch of the Steam page. Which, uh, another pro tip, if you're using Steam, get your page up as soon as possible. Definitely get that sweet wishlist action going. Uh, I'm really glad I had that huge head start now because if I put that page up like a month before launch, uh, it would just be a pretty bad time. So yeah, it was a much better reaction this time around. But still, even though it looked and sounded good, so to speak, uh, it still had to play good since, you know, it's a video game. Uh, and at that point, I hadn't really done a lot of like external like play tests. Uh, so I went off to my local game dev group, the Cleveland Game Dev. Shout out to them. Um, and I found out through them that they were going to be splitting a booth cost in an upcoming convention. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, never really been to a convention before. So might as well give it a shot, see what's happening. Uh, so a few months later, I went off to GDEX 2018, my very first convention. And it was a rough, rough shit show. But it was very necessary. Like, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing, no clue what to do before showing up. I came with just only the bare essentials, the monitor, the game, a controller, a few business cards, and that was really it. And also candy, too, because that works every time. Um, and yeah, it was also first come, first serve. So I only had the small end of the end of a table because I arrived, like, really late. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty rough. Um, but still, even in that little dinky state, it accomplished my goal of getting players hands-on with the game and directly getting their feedback. Um, it also helped that it was still pretty cheap to attend to. Uh, the cost overall was about $300 for the weekend, uh, mainly because there's just a two-hour bus ride down the road. And I stayed with a college friend while I was there, split the booth costs, and just basically kept things pretty low. But either way, it confirmed me that there was an action audience for this game and that somehow... They actually liked it, which is pretty cool. I'm not used to compliments, so it was pretty pretty new to me. So next convention will be DreamHack Atlanta, two months later. Um, and here are the organizers. They actually reached out to me first because uh, they had found my game through some weird channel that they had been, you know, doing their thing on. Um, and that was kind of a shocker, too, because I'm not really used to attention. I'm still not. Um... And it was just crazy to see, like, who's watching you from afar, even when you don't know it. So, yeah, I went down to Atlanta, got a carpool from a friend. Um, and it, this one was a much bigger convention. And it was also a weird dynamic, too, because it was, like, heavily esports focused. So you had, like, these big names like Halo, Overwatch, CSGO, like, on one side. And then right across the aisle was just my tiny ass pixel art narrative based indie game. And I'm just like, please just play my game. Like, I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. Just give me something. Um, so that was weird. Uh, but even still, I got like really great feedback. I even won best art house that year. Um, and it was a great chance for me to just go outside my comfort zone, both in terms of like event setting and also just socializing with players. Because of GDEX, I didn't really know what to do when people were playing the game. I would just kind of stand back and like watch them from afar didn't really know what to do with my hands or, like, how to talk to people like that. Um, but here it was a lot more natural. I, mean, I was just talking to players, getting their feedback, making friends. Uh, just had a pretty good time in general. Um, not sure if I would have done it again if it wasn't as close by or as cheap, because this one was a little bit more expensive, but still pretty cheap, around, like, 600 bucks. Um, but, yeah, it was one of those neat little learning experiences uh, and it was good practice for what was to come next, which would be the biggie, GDC 2019. Uh, I got into the indie mega booth here. Uh, and this is also where I met uh, Microsoft and the Xbox reps. Um, 
And this is a totally different rodeo compared to the past two events. Like it had actual networking involved. It was like all these developers, some big and large. I had no clue what I was doing. I was just some rando there. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a pretty interesting experience. Uh, definitely the most expensive chip up to this point too. Uh, a lot of my costs were subsidized thanks to the Indian Mega Booth. Uh, they provided the actual TV, some monitor, the headset. I really just had to like just bring myself in the game. Um, and it was a much different atmosphere compared to the previous two. Like it had a much more like triple A feel if we're talking in gaming tool terms. Um, it was also a lot more precise feedback wise because like it was other developers. Um, and it was great too because I actually got to like meet a ton of contacts there, like publishers, pouring houses, PR companies, just new friends in general. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I showed off the game for the first two days there, and the rest of the week was just free for me to just do whatever I wanted to and just make as many connections as possible. Um, and that's kind of a toughie, because at that point, I was cool and comfortable like just showing off the game itself. But when it came to actually like networking separately, I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I have mad anxiety. All these people seem to like know each other already, and meanwhile, I'm just in the corner being like, Hey, how, how do I talk to y'all? I don't know what I'm doing. Help. Um, but somehow, we made it happen. But yeah, uh, here's a very brief guide to networking, how I did it. Um, well, first off, just remember that you're always networking, even when you don't realize it. Like, the way you present yourself, the way you talk to other people, the word that gets around about you, you're always pitching, and you're always networking, no matter what you're doing. Um, so yeah, other tip I would have, just go out there and talk to people already. Like, it's a networking event. People are there to meet other people. Um, and ask them questions, you know. Ask them about their favorite games, their own games. Like, people love talking about themselves. Uh, and it was also great for me because I've always just been uh, a listener in general. So it was important to just be an active listener and actually engage with them and see what they're actually saying and, like, all that fun stuff. Um, and it goes without saying, but... You know, treat people as people. Don't be an asshole. Um, you know, you think it would be pretty obvious, but you'd be very, very surprised. Um, but yeah, definitely go into like any of these relationships, business or otherwise. Just try to trying to make a friend first and foremost. At least that's how I always do it. Um, and definitely don't be afraid to like reach out to like other friends or contacts to like help you make those conventions. You know, have them go out with you like when it's safe to do so. Um, have them introduce you to other people, just all that fun stuff. Um, master the art of following up. Uh, if you are looking for something, give them a way to contact you. Don't waste your time. It's very clear when someone wants something and it's just waiting for that time to just slip in and just set that bomb off. So, yeah, this is very, very brief guide. Uh, if you want a much bigger and much better and much more fleshed out guide, uh, definitely check out Victoria Trans and Introvert's Guide to Networking article uh, because it's great and she's great. Um, and yeah, so as you can see in the picture, it was my first time meeting Xbox and that whole uh, rep over there. Um, and yeah, when it came to actually like getting on Xbox and talking to them, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really know how the whole process went. Um, so it was really good to have like a rep there in person to kind of like walk me through step by step just to like see how to get those initial steps started. So we kept in contact throughout the coming months. Uh, we met in person again during the Game Desert Color Expo, another great expo because it was a very targeted, very niche event. So I was able to directly connect with my target audience. And uh, so Xbox was a sponsor there. So we got there in person together and I received word that they were gonna be having a little open house uh, before PAX West next month. Uh, and I had never been to PAX West, there had been to Seattle. Uh, so I was like, Hey, like, you know, you know, definitely consider me if you want to, let's just keep in touch, you know, keeping it pretty casual. Um, but eventually I was formally offered a spot at the show and I made my way off to Seattle. Uh, the open house itself went really well, if not pretty overwhelming. It was directly like on their main campus. And again, still having lo no clue what I was doing, which is there at the game. But again, at this point I was still pretty comfortable, like showing it off, having like learned those lessons in the past, like few events. Um, and one of the perks of showcasing there was I got a free entry to the first day of PAX, but, uh, didn't have a pass for the rest of the weekend until another contact hooked me up. Shout out Jen. 
But even with that free pass, you know, I had no permanent boof, no way to actually show off my game other than a few uh, scattered events here and there. But I was like, hey, I'm still at PAX. My audience is here. Like, I still want to show off the game somehow. So with that, my phone and Instagram became an absolute godsend. My Instagram page is essentially a little mini portfolio of the game itself. So I'd walk around with that, show it to people, casually, of course. Like, not just, you know, having it out, you know, showing my game everywhere. Um, and yeah, I just used it as an opportunity to casually connect with other devs and people within the industry. So after the ID at Xbox open house, I had received a few few hints that I was going to get a Game Pass deal, but I didn't really know what that meant and what that like involved. Um, but it was like formally offered in early October 2019. Um, and it was pretty huge. Like, it's still the biggest financial deal like I've ever gotten, like ever, to the point where I had to ask them to like repeat the numbers that I got uh, over the, on our phone call. Um, and while I can't go into specifics, uh, I was given upfront support in addition to the rest of the actual like licensing fee. Uh, and it was really cool because at that up until that point, I had just been bootstrapping. Like the game was just funded out of pocket just through videography gigs and other just random one-off hustles. Um, and I was also doing publisher negotiations at the time too. And the Game Pass deal allowed me to fund the rest of the game, make it profitable, and still do everything I wanted to do with a publisher without even having to get a publisher. So yeah, it was a pretty big deal. But if a big number like that comes certain challenges. And that's where we get into the fun, boring, complicated, legal, fun time bit. What joy, what joy. So yeah, I actually had to really get deep in the biz dev around this time. Um, very first thing I did was to get a lawyer and I cannot stress out enough, enough, please get a lawyer. Um, I can't read legalese at all. So it was really important that I that I didn't miss out on anything that could have impacted the game negatively down the line. So definitely get a lawyer, have them look over everything, have them tell you exactly what the contract is saying and what you have to do and yada, yada. Um, this also goes without saying, but definitely double check that your other company and business elements are also in order. Like have your company set up, your bank account, all the tax info, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, the entire process from the initial offer to the signed deal was actually pretty short in my case. It was about like three weeks. Um, up, from what I hear, that's actually pretty atypical. Um, for a lot of devs, it can be weeks, if not months before like anything really happens. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on the situation and just luck too. So be patient, be persistent. Nothing's wrong with like giving them a little poke that they haven't answered for a while. And don't feel bad about it. Like at the end of the day, like it's your baby, it's your game. You gotta do what's best for it. And you gotta like have all, as, as much info as you want to with it. Uh, so with that being said, this did take up all of my time at certain points, um, which really kind of sucks when you're a solo dev because when I'm like, heavy in like biz dev tasks or even any task that's like not directly making the game my mind is like oh hey here's a bunch of ideas and like other stuff for the game itself that you can't work on because you're doing boring business stuff um so if i, if I had to do it all over again i honestly might have just hired someone to just take care of all that stuff if not for just a few weeks just so i could like focus on what actually matters which is like actually, actually finishing the game um and yeah, as like I said earlier, I was also going through publisher negotiations too. Um, and it was weird because compared to that, uh, the Game Pass offer was like a lot more straightforward and simple and so much less stressful. Like publisher negotiations all required so much extra materials like demos, pitch decks, timelines, all this types of stuff versus Xbox. They were just like, hey, we want you on Game Pass. Here's a contract. You cool with the paperwork? Cool. All right. Feel free to sign it when you want to. Um, yeah, it was pretty simple and straightforward. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a lot to handle in general. And it came with some uh, unforeseen downsides, too. Um, like, one of the feelings that popped up is that there was a much more increased sense of pressure and depression regarding the actual development of the game. Like, I often felt like I wasn't even good enough to be a developer, let, let alone to be on Game Pass or even or anywhere else. 
and that I would let everyone down. I would get exposed for being a fake developer or all that stuff. Yeah, imposter syndrome. It's a, uh, it's not fun. But that's a whole, that's a whole other separate talk where you get into. Um, I was also pretty burnt out, burnt out at the time too, because I was doing so much traveling and promo and all this other stuff unrelated to the actual game. And I didn't really have a good balance of, you know, actual development and biz dev, PR, and actually taking care of myself, which is like the most important part of anything. Um, and because of everything surrounding the deal, uh, I didn't really have much time to actually decompress myself and just chill out for once, um, especially since uh, X-19 was coming up in the next month that I had to prep for separately. So yeah, wasn't really having a very fun time. But one day I chatted with a friend and mentor about it, and he reminded me that ultimately they wanted me on the service and that tons of people already seem to love the game. So clearly I was doing something right. I don't know. Um, I always just think negatively about just myself and everything that I'm going through. But in any case, he reminded me to just take breaks, love yourself, love the game, and just take things one day at a time because we're all human. Um, so yeah, definitely talk about these things with someone. Like, it's hard to like keep these things close inside, especially when you're a solo dev and like you don't really have really anybody on your team to talk to you about that. Um, so yeah, just let it all out. Don't keep it in because it, eventually it'll just eat at you, and it'll just negatively impact both just the biz dev side and just the development side too. And remember that ultimately, they want the best for you, the game, and the players. Uh, so yeah, it's it can be hard advice to pr actually practice if you're someone like me who is very bad to even take their own advice. But hey, we're all trying our best out here, y'all. So yeah, even with all that stress, a few weeks later, the deal was actually officially signed and it was a donezo. Um, the actual inclusion was announced the very next month at X19 a few weeks later. Um, and yeah, even with all that time and stress to finalize the deal, it was... It was still pretty dope to actually like have it announced at an actual Xbox event and have it like on stage for an audience. It was it was really cool. Um, so yeah, ever since then, I've done a few other deals uh, with both big and small companies. Uh, and it was really good to have all this knowledge acquired from uh, that whole shenanigan. Um, so yeah, the actual results of Game Pass will be seen when the game actually releases, which it's still a few months away. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, what did we learn today? Um, so yeah, definitely have a project that's actually worth the attention first and foremost. Uh, remember that you're always pitching, even if you don't know it. Like you never know who's like in the corner just watching you from afar, and you never know who actually knows about your game. Um, treat your contacts as people first. Um, you know, check in with them, not just to like see like any progress on like an actual biz dev front, but like, hey, like, how are you doing? How are the kids? How's your mental health? Especially in uh, the year of COVID, uh, especially important, just remember that human element and just treat people as people first. Um, and find and embrace those champions of your game. Uh, like I said earlier, like having that small RPG maker community first that could champion the game to like this other, uh, to my target audience first and foremost is dope. But it also applies to just, you know, platform holders in general. Like there were a lot of people within the ID at Xbox team that like knew about the game and were just like, you know, hustling about it, like talking about it, like within their internal meetings. Uh, so I think that was really important to like keep up that relationship and just really just like embrace them. Um, be proactive about any opportunities coming up. Uh, you know, what I like to do on Twitter is to uh, like search in, submit your game and like see what's happening and see what's upcoming. And just any way I could like get the game out there in front of like any new eyes was pretty important. Because again, you never know what opportunities will come up. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but with that being said, take care of yourself. Uh, don't burn out like I did and don't overextend yourself. I did a lot of events, both in person and virtual last year, and I was just pooped by the end of it. Um, definitely look out for that unique money too. Uh, and by unique money, I mean the money that can only, like that's very specific to your situation rather than the standard publishing deals or crowdfunding or stuff like that. Um, and you never know where it comes from, so just be on the lookout for it. Um, if you have questions, ask them. Ask for help. Ask for tips and advice. Um, as my nana once said, rest in peace, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So open your mouth 
and speak up. Um, and honestly, sometimes a lot of it was just luck. And some of it was like unluckiness too. Um, I would never, like, I never would have even gotten this deal if, you know, the one Microsoft rep actually came by my booth when I was at uh, GDC last year. So you never really know. It just, it takes weird stuff like that happening. Um, and again, be patient and, pers and persistent. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Take care of yourself. Take things one day at a time. Uh, and like these business deals and stuff like that, they don't happen overnight. So just keep it chill. Uh, be patient. And again, and I can't stress this enough, remember the human element of it all. Because again, we're all trying our best out here. Um, so yeah, that's my weird little story about Xbox Game Pass. And how I somehow went from being a scrappy, dinky little a one-man show to being a slightly bigger, but still one-man show. And still having no, no clue what I'm really doing. Uh, so yeah, game will be coming out pretty soon. I hope it does well. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but for right now, I got a game to get back to. Uh, so yeah, thanks for coming to my talk. Well, coming to my talk. Watching my talk, really. Uh, have a good one. Stay safe out there. Wear your mask and uh, be excellent to each other. Have a good one. Yeah.